Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited that scrapbook.com invited me to be a part of their 12 days of Christmas. I can't believe Christmas is already here and I'm super excited because not only my birthday around Christmas time, but I love the holidays. And one of my favorite traditions that I've done with my daughter since they were little and they're all in their mid to late 20s is an advent calendar. I've never made the advent calendar, but the tradition of having it is something that they love and I love uh, putting it all together. So it's a little version of what I've done with them and it's also something that I've done using the Sizzix Paper Village and the Festive Tales and all of the Festive Card Stocks. I'm actually on the creative design team at Sizzix, so I get to play with all this fun stuff every day, all day. Even when I'm not working, I still find myself doing it. So let me show you what I created. It's using Tim Holtz Paper Village that we created with Sizzix, the Thinlet Dies. And they're all individual houses. They fit perfectly through the Sidekick, Sizzix, uh, Sidekick machine or any of our other die cutting machines. But with just a few dies, you can create these cute little villages. You can keep them completely plain or have one little window or the door and no windows. It's such a cute little, um, little set that with no matter what color papers or embellishments you add, it makes a cute little village. So I thought with a little bit of felt and putting it on here, I did the 12 days of Christmas and I thought this would be a cute little technique to do with the advent calendar. So I've numbered them all using our opulent cardstock. So those are the 12 days. I've also used the festive tails in our cardstock and adhered them with hot glue onto this, oops, this piece of felt. But what's fun is you can lift them up and add a little goodie underneath. So something like this house, it's a cute little house. Just if it was a little gift for whoever's um, the person in your life that you're creating it for. Look how cute a little washi tape. So on that day, they would lift it up to see what's inside. Now my daughters are kind of sneaky, so I could probably see them looking around throughout the week before that day actually uh, comes up. So what I would do is just put it in that night. So that's what I've done for them. Um, something similar to another cute idea is instead of if you have a bigger item and you don't want to put it underneath the house, you could go ahead and put a little clue. So sometimes I've done something like a little note that says, hey, Annalisa, you forgot to make your bed. And they run upstairs and Annalisa's bed might have three $1 bills or three new chapsticks or something. So the gift doesn't have to be underneath the houses since they're all different sizes, but you could do little clues and kind of have them running around the house. So let me put on my glasses and show you some fun little ways that you can create these houses using the Sizzix um, paper and some of our opulent paper. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. And this is the die set that I use. So you're gonna get three different houses. You get this, let me turn it around so you can see a little bit better. This one's a little bit wider. Then you have the narrower one here. And what I did is I added the little windows inside and if it had a little flatter edge, I'm sure we could figure out a way to do that. It kind of looks like a little British um, telephone booth. So that's the narrow one. And then there's the wider house, which creates this size and then grab another one. The medium size is this one here. So the good thing about that is say I don't want to have these two windows. Say I just want to have the door and four windows. I would go ahead and run this through the machine and while I'm running it through the machine since it can cut multiple pieces I'm going to put that in there at the same time. So let me show you how I could create a wholly different house using one die. I could put a couple um, windows up and up here, or I could keep it completely plain and just do a little circular window. Depends on the type of building that you're uh, building. So using my Big Shot Fold Away machine, I'm going to go ahead and cut the little house here. So let's see, I'm gonna use actually our Mermaid Kiss. This is one of our um, cardstocks from our regular cardstock uh, color set. We have glitter that matches, we have embossing folders that match. So what you're gonna need to do is you want to cut um, two of the same time, two at the same time. One of them is gonna be the front of the house and you're going to create it with the window and the door. So you're just gonna lay it in and it's gonna flush right up against that. You can leave a little space if you want. So I'm doing it upside down, so hopefully it's even. Just to give you the idea. But at the same time, say I wanna do the roof in a different color. This is the roof for this one because it's the wider house. I wanna do the roof in white. So I'm gonna cut this piece. So you can cut multiples at the same time. I'm gonna cut this piece with the white. Actually, I'm gonna move this up here. And since it's a thinlet and this, the machine does a pretty good pressure, you can actually cut through more than one at a time. So just to save time, I'm gonna lay two pieces of the Mermaid Kiss on top of each other and have the rooftop there. Sorry, we only need one cutting pad, so there's one on the bottom already. 
And then I'm gonna lay the house right here on two pieces of cardstock. And then I'm gonna go ahead, put that on the one cutting pad on the bottom. Big Shot Fold Away Machine comes with the platform and the thinlet. Now, if you're gonna be using any of our bigger dies, you wouldn't need to have the platform underneath. But since this is a thinlet, and I actually, well, you know what I'm gonna do? Now that I realize it, I don't want the doorway on both, so I'm just gonna cut it one time and run it through that way. You're gonna hear some crackling. It's totally normal. It's just letting you know that the, everything's cutting. And it's just the roller and the blades hitting against each other. So with this rooftop, as you can see, it scored it and it cut it. So that's gonna be able to be folded perfectly and go right on top of the house to keep them nice and cozy during the winter time. <laughs> so that cut beautifully. And see, it cut out the doorway. So the great part about this little doorway is it only partially cuts it because you don't want your door to stay open during the winter time. You don't want the extra critters to come in. So it just scores that area. So you can go ahead, fold it open, and you've got that right there, ready to go. All the little pieces here, you're gonna score also on the score lines, not the pieces, the little uh, blade. So I'm gonna cut one more house. Now to avoid the crackling, which I should have showed you before, but I'm gonna show you now is turn your thinlets at an angle if you can. It depends on how big your die is, but turn it at a little angle. So if the roller hits it at a point instead of the blade straight on, it's not gonna jump or do that crackling noise. So I like to turn it if I have enough work area for my blade and run it through. And you'll notice the crackling isn't gonna be as noticeable. Just a little trick. Okay, so since I didn't put a thinlet in there, I don't have that extra doorway or windows. So I'm gonna get my little mess here off to the side. This is another little um, accessory that we have that I love. It's our magnet, magnetic sheet. So what it does is all the little dies that you have that you don't wanna lose, they're mag they're, the thinlets can just lay right on there and fits perfectly in there, on here, and it's not gonna slide away. So that's what's great about these is put it in your little um, storage envelope and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to assemble this. So what you're gonna see is the little score lines here. You're gonna fold it in all the score lines. I like to fold it forward and backwards just to be safe, just to be sure that it's gonna uh, fold perfectly. And then the score lines also here where your tabs are, that's the part that's gonna be the adhesive. So to create one full building, you need to um, cut the house two times. But just make sure that, unless you want the same windows in the front and the back, you wanna make sure that you um, only put the doorway and the window in, on one side. So that side's ready to go. Same with the other one. And all the different colors, it's so much fun to do. If you use a pattern paper or colored cardstock or glitter, you can assemble it and make the cutest little village, some kind of cute little, cute little neighborhood I'd like to live in. So I'm gonna show you how to assemble it. So using my Sizzix um, glue gun, you wanna adhere the tab on that's on the straight end against the tab that's here. Oops, forgot to fold this one down. And you'll see, because it's pretty obvious when you have a house, it goes like that. So I'm gonna put my hot glue here. You could use any kind of heavy duty glue. It doesn't have to be hot glue. I just, just because this dries pretty fast and it'll be ready to go. I'm on my, oops, my mat here, my self, my um, craft mat, adhesive mat. And scratch that off. Lift that up. And then the next tab. You guys got any of your Christmas shopping done? These would be great ideas for people in the crafting, your crafting friends and family who would love this little gift. I mean, it's so cute. It could be any kind of colors. You could do all woodsy or, so see how it matches up perfectly. So that's all ready to go. Since you folded them ahead of time, you know that they're gonna match up and they're cut from the same die, so you know they match up perfectly. So there's a the house ready to go. Now I want to do the roof. So the roof is already cut. All I need to do is put a little bit of adhesive on all the tabs that I already folded. And this one I didn't fold very well, so let me fix that. 
Okay, so those are all set to go. Put a little of the hot glue. I'm gonna do a real, on all four, oh, let's see, that's six sides, just so, and then move fast. How cute is this? Open the door, let your friends in, welcome them in for the weekend. And then what I like to do is, if you could remember from my um, set here, I added a little bit of the blizzard and the little flurries from the snow. So from the, um, on the houses and on the rooftops. Let me just show you re really quickly how I did that. I just have a basic white acrylic paint with just a little bit of water in it and a toothbrush. <laughs> One that I only use for crafting and I don't actually put it in my mouth. And then I'm just gonna flick it. It depends on how saturated I do the toothbrush. You can see how busy of a winter storm that was coming through. You do it too heavy and then sometimes, or if you soak it with a little bit of water, or dilute it with a little bit of water, might get a little too heavy, but you get the technique. That's kind of a fun, fun idea to do. So let me put this off to the side, and then I wanna show you really quickly what I did to create the trees. You have to always have to have a handy piece of, uh, or handy bit of baby wipes off to the side, or at least a white paper towel to clean up your mess, or in your hands. Um, so for the trees, these are the trees from the Festive Tales. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it two times, one in the green and then also in the brown because I want the brown to be um, the branches, not the branches, sorry, the, the tree trunks. So I'm gonna cut it in brown. But since I put the, so the um, scissors adhesive sheets, that's why I wanted to tell you what I did ahead of time, is I laid, peeled back this, it's a double-sided adhesive. So once I lay this side down onto my cardstock, the back side stays on until I'm ready to peel it off. So any intricate dyes, any letters, any words, it's perfect because it's gonna be a sticker and you don't have to do worry about any um, fine streams of glue. Um, it's already gonna be a sticker ready for you to go. So I'm gonna go ahead, run this one through. There wasn't a lot of crackling on that because since the trees already had a point, I didn't have to, it wasn't gonna hit the straight edge. So with our poke holes in our die pick, these intricate ones are come out really easily, ready to go. So that's gonna be, I'm only gonna use the tree trunk part of that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the green. I'm gonna do two, two green at a time. This is from our festive card stock. This is our um, mistletoe and our um, fir tree. I love the colors. The colors from the uh, festive card stock is so much fun. They're pine cone and peppermint. I love the names of them all. Um, and also, if you're familiar with the uh, Sizzix colors, scrapbook.com carries all of our glitters and embossing powders and our um, sequins and beads that coordinate with all of these. So if you're working on something and you wanna have a glitter or embossing powder that matches it, we've got it. Okay, so this is a sticker already. I'm gonna peel this off. Actually, I'm just gonna cut the tree trunk off and lay it down. Even with my glasses, these are hard to see, okay. So with the adhesive back, it's already a sticker. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it down there. Matches up perfectly on the tree trunk. And then this one, same idea. I'm just gonna cut off all these little pine branches. These could be used later if you did it in another color and added it and made a little wreath or something. That would make a fun little idea. Peel this off. Be careful pulling these off because you don't want to tear the little branches and twigs off. 
So this one here, same idea. This one's already a sticker too. I'm just gonna lay it down the middle because I cut off the branches. And it matches up perfectly. So both trees are ready to go. So what I did is I bent it back. Bent the tree trunk back just a little bit. And I'm bringing my little Advent Village back over here. And with a little bit of hot glue, I'm gonna put it on the base. Of the, tree, the part that I bent back and just adhere it down there. And you could also do the same thing with the, um, the paint and add a uh, little snow to the paint also. I'm sorry, a little snow to the tree. And then let me put this one right about there in front. Kind of makes them all come to life. And I wanna show you just really quickly how I cut the numbers. So the numbers I used our um, alphanumeric tiny tight uppercase. It comes with numbers and letters. I just pulled out the numbers, but it comes with, uh, for, the, for the vowels, you actually get four of each one, which is great. Let me put this glue gun down so I don't burn myself. But the numbers, you get two of each, because obviously if there's number 22, you know, you gotta use both, so. <laughs> so what I did is adhesive sheet. So this is just something I like to have on hand is a bunch of strips of my Sizzix adhesive sheet on the back of multiple colors. So I can just lay it down on my machine and cut it through. So since December 25th is the best day, how about if I do it in the white also and I'll add it to the same house. So I'm just gonna lay it down. It already has adhesive sheets, so it's gonna be a sticker already, which makes it nice and easy to adhere down to the house. But any of these, even a, a tower of our glitter or um, the adhesive sheets or anything, I've got a great little gift for you to um, add to the holidays uh, for any of your crafting friends. So these are perfect little ideas for you to make for friends. Maybe you could give them a little advent calendar. Um, so these are already a sticker, ready to go down. So the one that I just made, I'm gonna put that down there. When I was a kid, I loved advent calendars, but they weren't as clever as they are now. We would just have a card with a pretty little photo behind it, and my sisters and I would fight over who got to choose the one for the day to see what the photo was. And Christmas Day was always so, not photo, a little drawing. Christmas Day was always such a pretty little scene. Um, but now with the little drawers and the fun little festivities you could do, adding little treats for everybody, it's just real fun to, to give, so. That is the little one for December 25th. Be cute to set up in their bathroom or on the kitchen counter. Just give them a whole little series on the mantle and then let them choose who gets to open the little gift inside. Or maybe if you have more than one child, how about one for, one for each? So I hope this has inspired you to do something fun for the holidays. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a merry, merry Christmas, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.